by great mercy or by Shinabad's mercy, we would like to read the saints of Bengal. If you have this book today from page one, H3, story of Sri Radha Ramana Charana Dasa Deva. Just over time. Mm -hmm. Please, yeah, yeah. I don't understand. We have everything set. Not really. Only hundreds. Get out there. Get out there. Mm-hmm. So we continue reading. Page number 183. We continue the story about. Uh, Radha Ramana Charan does there uh, watching the the play, the drama. Uh, written by Girish Babu. Uh, Chaitanya Viva. So as Radha Raman Charan does there, watched this drama, many ecstatic symptoms appear on his body, and uh, then Girish Babu had to stop the drama. He, you know, he was very concerned. And uh, then, when uh, Radha Raman Charan Das Dev regained his consciousness, <laughs> then uh, Girish Babu shared with him his experience. <coughs> of hearing uh, uh, Radha Raman's Kirtan. So, Girish Babu said, to Baba Mahasaya, but your Kirtan song, which I heard, the other day still rings in my ears. And then the 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 verse from this song goes like this. What is in the past is past. Let it stay there. Now, hold on, Nita's feet, forever and in secrecy. For still, there is a time. Don't let it pass in vain. Make hay, meaning in your garden, in your field, rice field. Make hay while the sun shines. And the weather 
is drug. Thank you. That is the thing. And then Girish Babu continued. So please bless me so that I don't waste my time in vain and bless me to hold on in times of Translate in Japan, everybody is listening there, then they can listen. Yes. No, what channel is it? Uh, is translating in back channel. Gurudev said very good. Done very good. Ah, okay. <laughs> So, uh, Girish Babu also asks for the blessing. Please bless me to hold on Nita's feet to win his grace before I die. Baba Mahashaya was happy to hear this. He embraced and blessed Girish Babu and and uh, left from the from the this place. After some time, Baba Mahashaya returned to Puri. Balaram and other devotees started coming to him. At one point, Balaram said, All that you have said has come true as instructed by you. I had gone to Karnata, Konark, uh, Konark, for worshipping nine stars. As soon as I returned from there, it was heard that the government had proposed an appointment of an English manager for the temple <laughs> and the approval of the Maharaj was awaited. At first, everyone got apprehensive, but Everyone is now satisfied to see the gentle behavior and religious attitude of a new manager, new English manager. Babaji is saying, I'm happy to learn all about the management of the temple and service of Jagannath. Now go and bring Jagannath's Mahaprasad. Mahaprabhu has come with me. He has to be offered the prasada. Prema Dada was surprised. He said to Baba Mahasaya, Mahaprabhu is Bhagavan himself. Narayan and the other gods are his partial manifestations. How can you offer to him Prasad of Jagannath or any other deal? And Babaji responded, 
You have asked a good question. Maybe you remember I have told you on several occasions that you must not mix tattva or the ultimate reality as it is in itself with lila. Tattva and lila are two different aspects of the same thing. As far as the aspect of Bhagavan as Tattva is concerned, Bhagavan is infinite, omnipresent, and perfect in all respects. In this form, Tattva form, he is neither conceivable nor worshipable. Bhagavan's Lila is out of question. His appearance, his disappearance, childhood, adulthood, marriage, sannyas, dance, and kirtan, all are meaningless. But Bhagavan is by nature rasa, transcendental bliss, and rasa, enjoyer of that bliss. Rasa is not possible without a lila. And for the sake of lila, he hides within himself his infinitude, infinitude. Yeah. He hides his perfection. He hides his only presence. And he hides all other qualities that goes with his intrinsic self as the ultimate reality or the all perfect being and he submits to his own lila shakti which makes him dance as lila shakti wills as an ordinary human being. Under the spell of Lila Shakti, he allows himself to be tied by Mother Yashoda. He allows himself to carry the shoes of Nanda over his head. He allows his friends, Sridham, Sudha, etc., to climb upon his shoulders. And he allows himself to dance to the tune of the gopis and enjoys it all. Mahaprabhu is undoubtedly the all perfect king, since he is no other than Sri Krishna. But in Lila, he assumes the role of a devotee. Mahaprabhu not only worships Jagannath and takes Jagannath's prasad, but goes to the extent of taking the dust of the holy feet of the Vaishnavas 
And by doing so, Mahaprabhu realizes a higher kind of happiness, then he derives from his own self as the all perfect being. Mahaprabhu as Tattva is different from Mahaprabhu in Lila. In Tattva, it is his Aishwarya power that predominates. And in Lila, it is Madhurya, sweetness that predominates. If we mix Aishwarya with Madhurya, the sweetness of Lila disappears. After some time, there was a sweet disturbance in Baba Mahasha's heart. And he came to know that four other tapas also longed for his service. So Baba Mahasharya or Lakshman Maharana, the carpenter, and asked him to make beautiful and spacious Simhasana altar for the deities. So Lakshman said, I will make. I think uh, an altar, Simhasana, big enough for Radha and Radha Kanta will do. At that time, Radha and Radha Kanta were deities in the ashram of Baba Mahasharya. So Baba answered, No, four other, four other deities are expected soon. The Simhasana should be big enough to accommodate the guests along with Radha and Radha. So Lakshman made uh, Simhasana. And after Radha and Radha Kanta were seated on it, one of the disciples of Sri Radha Raman Charan Das Baba just said, Baba, when will those other tapus arrive? And Baba Ji, so they will arrive in ten, in ten on tw or twelve days. Then disciple asked, "Where will they come from?" Baba. Two of them will come for Haridwar, and two from Calcutta. Disciple. Are all the four deities of Radha Govinda? Babaji answered, The two deities from Haridwar are Radha Govinda. They are called Radha and Radha Vinod. Those from Kalkuta are Gauranitari. 
So in the footnotes. Yes. Baba Mahashraya could have built separate altars for the guests. Why did he make a spacious altar, Simhasana, in which they could all be accommodated together? Was it because the guests were so near and dear to Radha and Radha Kanta? that they wanted them to stay as close to them as possible. That's true. So it was. Radha and Radha Vinod are different manifestations of Radha and Radha Kanda. Is combined manifestation of Radha and Radha Kanda. Ra ka uh, Radha Kanda means. No, let's keep on. Still, it's working. Radha Kanda here translated as Krishna, the husband of Radha. Nitai is combined manifestation of Balaram and Ananda One day, Baba Mahashaya wrote a letter to Jogan Babu of Kalkuta. To send a hookah with long pipe. This <laughs> and the best type of tobacco that was available. Lalita Dasi. What? We are done. Ah, okay. So we will stop here. Arat, Arat, we just started. So next time we will uh, start reading from page 186. Wow. Thank you, everyone. Brother, out there. Rade, Rade, thank you, Andaka, Rade. Andaka. Yes. Uh, can you, or if, if you don't have, sorry, if you don't have time now, next time, just just a little bit repeat uh, who is, uh, whose combination in these uh, Takujis, please. Ah, okay, okay. So, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So, Radha and Radha Vinod. Are just different manifestations of Radha and Radha Kanta. Then Gora is combined manifestation of Radha and Radha Kanta. Radha and Radha Kanta together. And Nitai is combined manifestation of Balaram and Ananga Manja. Chirade. <laughs> okay? Thanks. Yes, okay. It's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Husband of Radharani also. <laughs> Kanta, okay. Radha Kanta. Here is translated yes. the husband of Radha. <laughs> <laughs> Poor one guy. <laughs> Thank you, Radha.